first introduced, uh, we had many of our clients coming in to see if we would change their paperwork. You know, if they had a pit bull or a pit bull mix, they wanted us to change. Can't you say it's a boxer? Can't you say it's something else? You know, we really can't, you know, truthfully we can't because they are what they are. And uh, it's just up to people to support their breed and um, take care, be able to take care of their pets. But unfortunately, there were three different um, housing areas that actually put notice on people's doors telling them they had 30 days to either get rid of their pet or get out. What they were trying to do is say that all dogs, if your dog, you know your dog's vicious, it is your responsibility if it bites someone. Before, it was just gonna be pit bulls and bully breeds, the bulldogs, the bull mastiffs, those, those breeds. So now they're trying to change it. It goes before the General Assembly, I believe on the 9th. So, and that's the way it should be. If you have a vicious dog, no matter what type of dog it is, it should have to, that should be your responsibility. dog bites are Dotsons, Jack Russell Terriers, and Chihuahuas. They're just little dogs, so you don't hear about it because they're not as powerful as a pit bull. A Chihuahua can do an attack. It's not going to do as much damage because it's smaller. These are big, strong dogs. They need to be exercised and socialized. People don't understand what kind of dog they're getting when they, you know, they see a, a beautiful you know, puppy and then all they do is treat it with love and then they don't understand why they can't control it later, you know, with, with no discipline, you know. They, they don't understand why they can't control it with love later because it's not a person, you know. Um, you can't love it into doing what you want it to do. You know, people that try to teach, treat their dogs like kids and, and then wonder why, you know, something goes wrong one day, you know. Um, because the dogs are dogs, you know, they think like dogs. They're not people. And that even though they have personalities and can sometimes act like children, uh, they need to be, be trained and disciplined. Um, and I'm not saying that you need to hit your dogs. You know, I'm, I'm just saying that you need to show them who's boss. You need to make them do what you want them to do. Um, and sometimes it takes a lot of training. Um, it's repetitiveness, uh, but uh, it, it keeps them it keeps them happy, and it also keeps them safe. They're the cutest things ever, you know, little muscly, cute little fat-faced rascals when they're little. But these guys grow up, and they grow up to be 70, 80 pound dogs, and you need to have the space and time and energy to take care of them. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, out in the wild, the dogs run around for miles and miles and miles every day, you know, and they, they are stimulated. They're, you know, they're, they're sniffing around, they're smelling stuff, they're tracking stuff. They're being stimulated. Well, when somebody, you know, owns a dog, and doesn't do anything with it, then you know the dog's got all that energy that you know it's built to have. It's built for that, and uh, it's not doing anything with it. And sometimes they can become aggressive, or they can channel that into you know other things, to, uh, being destructive, um, in you know, exercise and training. You know that that would keep a lot of that from happening. Your dog chained up in a, on a 10 foot chain in the backyard and it never gets socialized. That's its area. That's where it lives. That's all that dog knows. 
And if those dogs are unneutered, then you, you're gonna have an aggressive dog. If somebody wanders into the yard, that's their 10 feet of space. They don't know anything, that's their whole life. If you have not um, socialized the animals, um, they're, they're gonna be aggressive. They've never, or even if they're not aggressive, they're gonna be curious. And you know, them running after that animal to smell it or to sniff it or, you know, is going to, um, one, uh, you know, look like the dog's chasing it, but it could turn into it chasing it because it could kind of release its prey drive um, you know, because, you know, for millions of years they, they uh, evolved, you know, to be able to hunt and stuff. They're so smart and they're willing to please and they are people focused. You know, I'm not going to say, you know, a lot of these guys were bred for fighting, you know, back in the day when, you know, dog fighting was legal. But even back then, if people had dog fighting dogs that were people aggressive, they put them down. They did not want that trait, you know, you, they were safe with people, it was just where they were bred to fight each other, you know, that sort of thing. And if they would have an animal, like I said, that was aggressive to people, they would not keep that animal. They would they would put it down, not, not breed that characteristic into the rest of their pets, not pets, but the rest of their fighting dogs. Um, the most important thing is socializing them, and um, that's the that's the hardest thing for people to do, and it's the simplest thing. My I could never see my dogs turning on anybody, but in the same thought, I, you know, I have to be responsible for them and not put them in the situation that they could turn on somebody and and get into trouble or get or hurt them. Um, the pit bulls have got a really bad rap about it because they are the dogs that people train to to fight, and, you know, not legally and not uh, morally, but still they are the dogs that people train to fight. One of the number one traits in them is loyalty, and they, as far as the fighting goes, I believe that the reason that people make them fight is because they want to do what they, what would ever make their owner happy. To teach your children to respect the dog. No one wants to have their ears pulled or their tail pulled or be sat on, you know, I mean, be sat on. The dogs have feelings too. So. You have to wait for the dog to get used to who you are and then you can start playing with it. Just put your hand out and let it sniff you. If you're new at it and you're scared that they're gonna bite you or something, don't get up in their face. Just stay away and see how they act. We established our own rescue so that people could donate to us. Um, we rescue animals from Tri-County Animal Shelter, which is the local shelter that we have. Um, they call us weekly with pets that are what they call at risk that need to leave, uh, leave the shelter in lieu of being put to sleep. Um, many of these guys are the bully breeds or American Bulldog, Amstaffs, um, the type of pit, pit bull types that um, our local shelter does not adopt. Um, it's, it's the county policy. Uh, Charles County runs the shelter. They're the um, controlling entity but St. Mary's and Calvert County share that shelter, but Charles County makes the rule. Some shelters do euthanize the bully breeds. They won't adopt them out to anybody but a rescue group. Our mission is to find homes for unwanted animals. We take in animals who are on return-ins, strays. Um, we also do all we can to get the good animals out of the kill shelter in St. Mary's County.
yes, that they over they are overpopulated, and the other heartache is they do have um, some of the pits in our area uh, have a genetic skin issue that causes them to have to have medication every day in order to get it under control. If you're not willing and able to get that medication and take care of that pet, you have a dog that you're going to end up, you know, some people have ended up either turning into the shelter or putting them outside, you know, because they smell bad and they itch and, you know, just if you're not committed to that pet, you know, that that's an issue with that as far as a health issue with them. Um, everybody and their brother thinks they've got a you know a breeding dog and it just makes you crazy because you breed them one time and you've got 12 to 15 puppies you know where are you going to find that many you know um, responsible homes that can take that many dogs on and the problem is they end up at the shelter or they end up tied in the yard or they end up being dropped someplace or you know just it's just you know it's the same plight of so many other dogs because this you know spay neuter issue is so important um, but pits especially because they are being um, singled out as far as places that they're allowed to be. Them specifically, just the fact the size litters that they have and some of the health issues that are um, coming to light and that's probably because they're being inbred now and you know everybody's, the gene pool's getting smaller and that's probably why we're seeing a lot of the skin issues and problems that we have with them. I've read stories on the internet about people who get these dogs who have been um, inbred as well as uh, as well as they just don't know where they came from but because the dog looks okay they think that the dog is okay and the dog you know turn on people or they turn on their kids many of the pets that come from uh, the shelter are owner give-ups uh, people that are moving can't, you know, take, can't or won't, won't take the pet with them. Um, guys that have been just turned loose that are turned in as strays. Uh, these guys uh, come to us. We get them fully vaccinated, uh, neutered, uh, checked for heartworm and intestinal parasites. As well as before we bring them home, we do a um, temperament, a temperament testing, you know, and that's just really basic things like, you know, will a dog let you restrain them? Can you hold them and, you know, make them hold still? Can you look in their mouth? Can you look in their ears, pinch their toes? Just little simple things, you know, we don't get into the whole, you know, putting the, I'm sure everybody's seen the gloved hand on a stick, you know, where you poke it at them and take their food away, that sort of thing. But you can pretty much, you know, tell their temperament by how they react to being restrained and just, um, just dealt with for a little bit. Um, we try to socialize them um, going into separate foster homes. Uh, occasionally we have puppies or younger dogs that really just need the extra care. Some of our fosters, um, they take them home, they work with the dogs. Because some of these dogs, we don't know where they came from or what they've been through. Some of them are starving when we get them. Some of them you know, we had one with their paws scraped off that was behind a car. So you don't have any idea what these dogs have been through. So the foster homes during the week, they take these dogs and they work with them throughout the week. And they can be able to tell you, this dog doesn't like other dogs, this dog is moody, this dog, you know, this dog barks a lot. So we try to do the best we can to figure out what their issues are. Spay and neuter, vaccinate, socialize, you know, with, with pets, peoples, and places that are, that are safe, you know, doing that. But, um, We'd like to encourage people to rescue anytime they can. You know, visit the shelters or go online to petfinder.com. Hi, this is Sue. She's a lab pit bull mix. She was actually found behind a local um, market and she was freezing and starving and a good Samaritan took her to her house and kept her overnight but they could not keep her. So they brought her to us. So now she's available for adoption. She's, I believe, eight weeks old, and she's just a little sweet girl. The sad thing is today she had three different families who wanted to adopt her, but because of the stigma on the pit bull, um, she was not able to go home because they rent, and where they live, they're not allowed to have any of the bully breeds. So she will still stay here with the Animal Relief Fund, go to her foster home until she finds her forever home.